U.S. ready to discuss with Ukraine deep strikes on Russia. China imposes sanctions on defense-related U.S. firms. China imposes sanctions on defense-related U.S. firms. Developing the economic corridor of the Ho Chi Minh Road. You're watching today's news on NTV channel. My name is Ha Zhang, your host. Washington is ready to discuss with Kiev the possibility of using U.S. weapons to strike targets deep within Russia. This is a statement made by U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken during a hearing at the U.S. Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Blinken's statement came after Ukraine's president requested Biden's administration to lift the ban on the use of U.S.-made weapons to strike inside Russian territory. Ukrainian officials mentioned that this policy hindered their ability to target Russian positions as Russian forces prepared for a major advance towards Kharkiv. Earlier, bipartisan lawmakers in the U.S. House of Representatives sent a letter requesting the government to allow Ukraine to attack Russian territory using U.S. weapons. In response to these actions, the Russian government warned that Ukraine's dangerous and provocative actions could drag the U.S. and other NATO members into direct conflict with Moscow. The Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs has announced sanction on a range of U.S. defense companies in response to U.S. arms sales to Taiwan and U.S. sanction on Chinese companies and individuals. The sanction list includes 12 companies belonging to the U.S. defense firms, including Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, and General Dynamics, as well as 10 executives of these companies. The measures imposed by Beijing involve freezing the assets of these companies in China and banning these company executives from entering China. The Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs said that the move is in retaliation to the U.S. unilateral sanctions imposed on several Chinese entities related to Russia while ignoring the country's neutral stance in the Ukraine conflict. Furthermore, the ongoing U.S. arms sales to Taiwan severely violate the One China Principle and the joint communiques between the two countries. These developments shows the escalating tensions between these two world superpowers. This morning, the government standing committee held a meeting with several ministries and localities on building a 500 kV Circuit 3 project from Guangzhou, Guangbing Province to Fonoi, Hengyan Province, and ensuring electricity supply during the peak period of 2024 and the following years. According to the report from the Vietnam Electricity Group, all four component projects of 500 kV circuits, three projects have basically completed the handover of 100% of the ground for pillar foundations and 93% of the nodal. The 500 kV circuit 3 project also passes through nearly 100 km along Nghệ An province. Up to now, Nghệ An has completed 200 out of 202 pillar foundation locations erected 54 pillar positions and is currently erecting 21 pillar positions. Based on a close assessment of the situation, Prime Minister has involved ministry sectors and localities to expedite the construction progress, aiming to put the 500 kV circuit 3 light project into operation by June the 30th. Coming up next are some updated news. The government has issued Decree 52 on non-cash payments, replacing Decree 101-2012 and Decree 82-16. Accordingly, for the first time, the concept of cryptocurrency is officially mentioned in this decree, defined as the value of a digital currency stored on electronic devices, based on the corresponding amount paid in advance by customers to the banks and payment intermediaries providing electronic wallet services. According to Decree 52, the two means of storing cryptocurrency are electronic wallets and prepaid cards. 
The Ministry of Transport has sent a dispatch to relevant units regarding the construction time of the PPP component project of the North South Expressway, the session from Zhengzhou to Baivot. Accordingly, the Ministry of Transport has approved an extension of the completion time to put the 19.3 km main road from the intersection of National Highway 46B to the end of the route into operation before June 30, 2024, and to complete the remaining volume of the project before September 30, 2024. The Zinchel Baivot Expressway project is a part of the east section of the North South Expressway, with total length of 50 km passing through the provinces of Nian and Hating, of which a 30 km section from Zinchel to National Highway 46B has been inaugurated on April 29th. On the afternoon of May 22nd, a nearly 1,000-meter-high water spout suddenly appeared in the sea of Haza, Khenghua province, dragging a column of white water sweeping through the sea, overturning many boats of fishermen. The water spout column appeared about 500 meters from the coast and moved rapidly within about three to four minutes, causing some ships to capsize along the way. After the water spout passed, many boats were heavily damaged, with the water flooding into the engine rooms and some boats being blown away quite far. Fortunately, there were no casualties. The economic corridor of Ho Chi Minh Road passes through five districts and towns of Nian province with total length of 132 km. The total natural area of the region is nearly 321,000 hectares, accounting for 19.47% of the total area of the province. With strength in high-tech agriculture, agroforestry processing, mineral exploitation, however, despite its potential and advantages, the economy of this area has not yet made significant breakthroughs. In recent years, the agroforestry process industry has become a spreadhead in bringing economic value to localities along the Ho Chi Minh Road region. In Nghĩa Đan District, Bao Ngọc Company is a pioneering enterprise investing in the development of raw material cultivation and processing of macadamia. Although the consumption of products in domestic market is very good, the company still faces difficulties in export. The first difficulty is the land for the construction of the facility. The other difficulty is that the policies are hardly supported. Development of ecotourism, agricultural landscape tourism, and community tourism is also a strength of the region. The HDT ecotourism area in Tangchung District is a tourist attraction. Although the area for ecotourism proposed only accounts for 4 hectares out of total area of 22 hectares, developing a model commensurate with the potential is not an easy task. The development of community ecotourism takes a long time and need huge financial capitals for construction and operation, so we would like to have capital support to boost our business. Developing the economic corridor of the Ho Chi Minh Road is a breakthrough step to awaken the vast and the potential rich western region. This corridor also plays an important role in connecting the east-west economic axis of Nghian province. Therefore, mechanism, policies and timely support should be provided to help localities effectively explore their advantages. The last news has ended our bulletin today. Thank for watching and see you next time.